In this video, I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch on Xbox Series X and S. It has been nearly two years since I first covered RetroArch on Xbox Series X and S, and a lot of things have changed and numerous update videos have been made for showing you how to do this install process. But seeing as I've used some of the same source material for the last two years and it has changed over the last year and a half, time has come to really show an updated process on how to do this. So there are two ways to experience RetroArch. There's dev mode and retail mode. I personally prefer dev mode like I've stated numerous times throughout the channel's history, but you get to choose whichever one you want. This video will be an in-depth dev mode guide, but it does cover the basic steps on how to get retail mode set up as well. I'm not going to go further into retail mode setup just because of the process involved and potential wait times involved. But listen along and you should be good to go for the retail side as well. And then of course RetroArch setup is going to have notations about specific retail and dev mode directories. But let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so to get started with dev mode, go ahead and press Y on the home screen of your Xbox, or if you're on the new dashboard, you can go up to search. Either way works, but it should bring up a search bar, and then you can type in dev mode. And then just press A on the green one with the Xbox Series S and X in the background. And then press A on install. And once that download is completed, just go ahead and open up the Xbox Dev Mode Activator app. And from here, click on Next. And click on Next. And when you finally get to the Activate Console page, you'll see a link to the Activate Xbox page and a code that you'll paste in to activate your Xbox. So if you open up an internet browser and type in that web address, it'll bring you to a Microsoft sign-in screen. So just sign in with the Microsoft account that you want to activate dev mode with. And after you get logged in, it'll bring you to the partner dashboard here. Next, we need to register for an Xbox dev mode account. So this is just basically a partner store account here. So I'll have a link to this page in the description below, but just go ahead and click on the sign up button. And now just go through and do the registration process. So I'm in the US. Individual. Make up a company name. Put in your contact info. And once you have all your info filled out, just click on next. Now on the registration page, you're going to be asked for a promo code. Chances are you haven't gotten one. You have to go through Microsoft directly to get these. So click on the add a new payment method button here under billing. And it'll select credit or debit card. So press select on that. And now put in your debit or credit card info. And after you have your info entered, press save. Now on the registration review page, just check mark the I accept terms and conditions agreement and click on finish. And now click on go to dashboard. But now on your partner center dashboard, if you refresh the page, you should see that there's a lot more info on it than before. But anyway, go ahead and click on my access. And over on the left, there should be a new section called dev devices and you will see Xbox one development consoles. Click on this. And you'll see account settings, manage Xbox devices, manage Xbox devices. And over on the right is a plus that will let us enter an activation code to register our Xbox console. So there we go, enter activation code. So from here, go back over to your Xbox and chances are your first code's timed out. So just go ahead and press A on get a new code. There we go. And then just get that entered into the activation code window and click submit. And there you go, your Xbox is now activated for dev mode usage. Now back over on your Xbox, you can just press A on switch and restart to switch it over to dev mode. And after your Xbox finishes rebooting, you're gonna be brought to the dev mode home screen, which should look something similar to this. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you are running on Wi-Fi, press your Xbox guide button, go to settings, network settings, and reconnect to your Wi-Fi network. So set up wireless network, go through that whole process. And after you're connected back up to your network, you should have a console IP address showing up in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. 
Next, we're going to add in our Xbox Live account that we just used to purchase dev mode. So just click on Add Existing for the test accounts here and put in your login info. And once you have that info entered, click Add. And now if you choose, you could go up to the test accounts banner up here, press your back button, and you can remove the tool from your screen so that way it just makes it a little less noisy. Next, go over to remote access and click on remote access settings. Make sure enable Xbox device portal is checkmarked. And then under authentication, make sure that is checkmarked and then set a username and password by pressing A on this and typing them in. And then once you have that finished, you could just go ahead and close out. And now we are ready to begin installing apps into our Xbox dev mode. But now let's go ahead and get RetroArch installed. So if you are on dev mode, you will go to RetroArch.com, click on the download tab, scroll down until you see the Xbox Series slash one instance here and click on download. And directly underneath this, you will see Visual Studio Runtime Libraries UWP. So click on this to download it as well. Now, if you click on download and it tries to install it instead, just right click and save link as to get the package downloaded. Now, once you have these downloaded, remember back on your Xbox dev mode home screen, there is the remote access panel with an IP address. Go ahead and get this typed into an internet browser. And once you have it typed in, just press enter and you may get a warning about your connection not being private. Just click on advanced and click on continue anyway, and then enter in the username and password you set up under the remote access settings. And that will bring you to the Xbox device portal home screen. And this is where you're going to be able to install all your various apps and emulators and what have you in dev mode. So to add in RetroArch, just click on the add button here. And then you could just drag and drop RetroArch into the installer window here. Click on next, and then it'll ask you to choose your dependency file. So you could just drag the VC lib folder or file onto that and then click start. And done, RetroArch is now installed on your Xbox dev mode. For those of you looking to install RetroArch in retail mode, the process is a little bit more interesting these days, now that Microsoft is cracking down on the retail side apps more. So essentially, you're going to go to Gamer13's GitHub and join their Discord server, and then they will post links to the retail apps, which you will then click on and it will add it to your Xbox account. And then you can go into my games and apps and download it. I'm not going to show you that process because I'm not going to wait for the apps to be posted. And I just don't care for showing retail mode stuff personally. But all the steps that follow will apply to retail and dev mode. So if you have done a retail mode install, you will follow along with these steps. Just note the difference in partitions. Now, regardless if you have chosen to use dev mode or retail mode, the next thing we're going to do is set up our USB drive for optimal performance when using Xbox RetroArch. So that way it will work with pretty much everything under the sun and all be usable through USB. So we don't have to worry about doing any FTP or any of that nonsense anymore. I recommend getting an external thumb drive or SSD for best performance, anything with a fast file transfer rate. Mechanical hard drives do also work, but if you want to do HD texture packs, they're not going to work as well. You'll miss out on some textures, they might not load at all. So an external thumb drive or SSD is recommended. So for today's example, I have a Crucial X6 one terabyte external SSD plugged into my computer. And this step does require you to have a Windows 10 or 11 PC. So if you are on Mac or Linux, get a VM with Windows 10 or 11 so you could do this step. After this step is completed, you can go right back to using your Mac or Linux install as long as it can read NTFS drives. But for this step, you do need to be able to access the Windows security tab and that is only available on Windows 10 and 11, I believe. But anyway, Make sure your drive is formatted as NTFS. So NTFS, if it is not formatted, you can just right click on it. Format. Choose NTFS. Quick format, start. Okay, done. Once the drive is formatted, right click. Properties. Security tab. Advanced. Add. Select a principle. Type in all location packages. 
and then click on check name so it gets it correctly placed. So there we go. If it pops up all caps, all application packages like so, it is done correctly. Then press OK. Now click on full control and OK. And finally, click on replace all child object permission entries with inheritable permission entries from this object. And then press OK. And it will give you this error about replacing defined permissions, so just click on yes. And if you get an error for a certain file like the security volume information, just click on continue. And with that, your drive is now ready to use in RetroArch. So go ahead and open it up. And we're going to make some folders here that we can direct our RetroArch subdirectories to to make our life a heck of a lot easier. So first up, we'll do simple things like games. Then we'll do our system folder. And then we will do our saves folder. Our save states folder. Playlist folder. Playlist thumbnails folder. And finally, a config folder. So these folders are the ones that your game saves, your system folder, BIOS files, your playlist entries, your thumbnails, and all of your per core configurations are going to be saved. So that way, if you ever need to update RetroArch, you don't have to worry about backing things up. They're already on your USB drive and good to go. Or if an update that automatically happens on retail mode screws something up and you have to reinstall it, you don't have to worry about losing out on all of your stuff. It's all on USB, it's all backed up, it's all good to go. But now you could just begin populating these folders. So for example, the games folder, just grab all of your ROM files and drag them into this folder. That's the other nice thing about using an external SSD. It goes a lot quicker to transfer this stuff over than a mechanical hard drive. But for this video, we're only doing a basic overview of ROM files. If you want more in-depth looks at file types and how to set up multi-disc games and different things like that for your games, check out my individual core setup videos for more detailed instruction on BIOS files and game setup. All right, now that those are copied, I'm gonna go over to my system folder and I'm gonna place my BIOS files within it. Again, if you want more specifics on BIOS file setup and game setup, check out my individual core videos for more detailed explanations on what things need to be named and where they need to be placed. But anyway, for this demo, there we go. And my USB drive is now ready to be taken out of my computer and put onto the Xbox. Now, whether you are in retail mode or dev mode, just plug your USB drive into your Xbox. And if this is the first time that you've used this drive on your Xbox, it will pop up asking you if you want to format the USB drive for games or media. Choose media, otherwise everything you just did will be deleted. But now we're ready to get loaded into RetroArch, but before we do, if you are on dev mode, we need to make sure that RetroArch has been changed from an app to a game, so head on down to RetroArch, press the back button, view details, change it from UWP app to UWP game. And then I like to restart the console. I don't think it's necessary, but I like to do it anyway. It's a Series S and X. It doesn't take that long to reboot. But once the Xbox is finished rebooting, you can go back down, press back, view details, make sure that the change stuck. There we go. It's on game. Cool. All right. So now we can get loaded into RetroArch. And when you first boot into RetroArch, you will notice that it doesn't look quite right. It is missing its assets. So we just need to head to the online updater, scroll down to update assets and press A and let it do its thing. And once it finishes downloading those, you'll see that the font looks a little more normal and we actually have icons to associate with everything as well. Nice. All right, from here, just go ahead and press B, head over to the settings tab Press up to go to directory, and we're going to change the directories for those folders we made over to our USB drive. So, for example, system BIOS folder. We're going to change that over to USB. So if you are on retail mode, that will be under the D drive. If you are on dev mode, that will be under E. So navigate to the directory 
for your specific install. Choose your system folder and then choose use this directory. And then repeat the process with all the other folders you created, so thumbnails. Configs. Playlists. Save files. Save states. And there we go. You can move and create other folders you want to as well, but never touch cores or core info files. These need to be where they are, otherwise things don't quite work as intended, so never touch these. You have been warned. But once you have those redirects set, just back out, head over to the main menu, configuration file, save current configuration, and then just quit out of RetroArch and relaunch it. That way the changes take effect for the next part. So next up, we're gonna go back into the online updater. Make sure you update your core info files, controller profiles, databases, And then if you plan on using cheats, overlays, or shaders, you could download those as well. So I'm just gonna download shaders for right now. But once you have all of that downloaded, head up to the core system files downloader tab up here. And this is where you're gonna get system files for things like PSP and GameCube. So first up, we could download the dolphin.zip folder. So this is our dolphin system folder needed to get GameCube and Wii games running correctly. You could download a Final Bird Neo Highscore.dat file, and then a PPSSPP system folder as well. Then they also have things needed for like EC Wolf, MAME, NX Engine, PR Boom, Scum, XRIC. So all of the non copyrighted files you would need to get some cores running can be found here. And then at any point, you could also update the installed cores to make sure they're on the latest version. Next up, we're going to set a hotkey for our RetroArch quick menu so we can actually leave games after we start them. So under the settings tab, head down to input, scroll down to hotkeys, menu toggle controller combo, choose one of the available options, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to go with L3 and R3 because that's what I'm used to with Steam Deck now. If you want to set up additional hotkeys, you can also do so here. So I recommend having a hotkey enable button. So I'm going to use my back button. And then you can set hotkeys for like fast forward, slow motion, load state, save state, and close content. And you can just go through them all and set them as you'd like. Next up, head into the video tab and go to the synchronization tab here. And we're going to turn on automatic frame delay to make it so we have less input latency on our controller. If you want to, you could also go into the scaling tab here and enable integer scaling. This one will be personal preference. It can result in black bars around your games. I like having it personally because it results in a better picture quality for most things. But once you have all those options set, head back up to the main menu, config file, save configuration. And then just to make sure everything takes effect, I always restart RetroArch again. There we go. But with that, we're ready to begin loading up some games. So one method of doing so is to head down to load content, navigate to your games directory. So again, retail mode users, you're gonna be under D and dev mode users, you're gonna be under E. Find your games folder, choose a system, choose a game, choose a core, and it will run. As long as it's set up correctly, that is. Again, if you need further help on setting up your individual cores, check out my Xbox Series X and S RetroArch playlist so you can see videos on setting up each of the cores that I cover. But from here, you can begin checking out your hotkeys so we can make sure our quick menu hotkey is working. There we go. Fast forward. Cool. Slow down. Cool. Quit. Cool. And that is all good to go. 
Another method of loading up games is to head down to the import content panel here and do a scan directory or manual scan to add your games to a playlist. I go over playlists in more detail in the individual core videos. But with that, you should have the basics out of the way to start playing most of your games on RetroArch on the Xbox Series X and S. Just as a little additional fun thing here, you can further customize your experience as you see fit. So you can head up to settings. And one of the first things I like to do is go to UI, menu item visibility. And I like to disable things I don't need. So for example, I get rid of the explore tab because it kind of breaks things sometimes. Standalone cores I don't use, so I just turn that off. I don't need favorites, I don't need images, music. And there we go. And then if you want to enable retro achievements, you could head to the retro achievements website, make an account, and then enter your login info in this panel here. And if you already have a retro achievements account, you could just go in and add your achievements account here. Enable or disable hardcore mode, leaderboards, challenge indicators, unlock sound, automatic screenshots, and all of that good jazz. And then once you're finished, you once again go to the main menu, configuration file, and save the current configuration. And then you just got to restart RetroArch for it to take effect. So now look at my much more streamlined RetroArch main menu here. But with that, our basic RetroArch setup is finished. Again, if you want more information about specific cores, go to my Xbox RetroArch playlist, find the core, and follow along with those videos. All right, so one last thing for dev mode users. You might be curious about how to go back to retail mode. Well, there are two ways. The first one being hitting the leave dev mode button right here, making sure the delete side loaded games and apps checkbox here is unticked and then pressing okay. If you forget to uncheck that box, you will delete everything on your dev mode side, which shouldn't be the biggest deal since all of your saves and your game folders and stuff are saved on USB but it's still a pain to reinstall RetroArch. The second method is to use Safe Exit by T3. So I have a download for this in the description below, so you just download the app. Once it's finished downloading, get it extracted. And inside the folder, you'll see the Safe Exit app and its dependencies. So you install this just like you did RetroArch. So you, you go into your Xbox device portal might need to refresh it if you reset your Xbox. Click on Add. And then again, you can just drag them right on in. And then it's Dependency Files. Whoops. Drag right in as well. All right, so it looks like it only did one at first there. So we're going to have to uh, go through and do them one at a time. There we go and then click on start. And safe exit is now installed. So back over on the Xbox, you'll see a new entry for safe exit. So you just run it to leave dev mode. And here we are back on retail mode, ready to enjoy our retail mode games. And there you have it, the process for getting RetroArch installed and set up for use in retail and dev mode environments. Again, while this is a basic setup video for just getting the program installed and configured, there are numerous core videos on my channel showing you in-depth instructions on how to set up individual systems, so be sure to check out that playlist in the description below. But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. It means the world to me that you support the channel and all that we do here. But I do have a couple of huge favors to ask here at the end. If you have not done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell to see when new content goes live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, so you could get constant updates and new videos, be sure to check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping us going, and again, bringing this content directly to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, y'all are amazing, thank you for believing what we do here and being our champions. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.